When practicing breath holds, when should you perform in them? At the end of the inhalation or exhalation? The quick answer to this question is that as far as uh, the biochemical effect of the breath holds go, it makes no difference. And I will explain in this video why. We have three blood gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide and nitric oxide. Let's start with oxygen. When we are inhaling, we are going to have a little bit more oxygen in our lungs compared to the exhalation. If we are going to be practicing hypoxic training, meaning if we are trying to bring the levels of oxygen in our blood below the normal one, which is at sea level, it is between 95 and 97, we want to have as little oxygen as possible. Does it mean though that uh, we have uh, to exhale and hold our breath? And the answer is no. I will demonstrate now how I can bring very quickly my oxygen saturation below 92%, which represents a 2000 uh, um, meters altitude, by performing breath holds at the end of the inhalation only. I will use an oximeter for that. You can see that my starting point is 100. I will be demonstrating when I'm inhaling by pointing my finger up, when I'm holding my breath by creating this sign with my hand and when I'm exhaling with my thumb down. If you paid attention to my hand, I never held my breath after exhalation. What I was trying to do is uh, make sure that the inhalations were short, as this is uh, the key to drop oxygen. Now, when it comes to carbon dioxide, we will have a very similar effect. When we are inhaling, we will be having a little bit more carbon dioxide compared to after exhaling, when we are dumping carbon dioxide. 4% of the air that we exhale is carbon dioxide. So if we want to be practicing hypercapnic training, is that a reason to be doing the breath holds at the end of the inhalation? And again, I'm going to argue that not necessarily, because you can definitely get into the state of air hunger, which is uh, the hallmark of hypercapnia, by holding your breath after exhalation. And finally we come to nitric oxide, and uh, here is probably the most important, uh, in my opinion, of, of the three. We want to be basically inhaling after breath holding in order to utilize nitric oxide. But we can inhale after breath holding whether we are holding a breath after inhalation or after exhalation. If you don't believe me, try the following. Take a breath in and hold your breath. And try to hold your breath to the maximum. Push yourself to the limit. And you will notice that the first thing that you will do straight after is you will inhale again. Now, as far as the biomechanics go, it does make a big difference if we are breath holding after inhalation or exhalation because uh, intra-abdominal pressure will change significantly. At the end of the inhalation, the diaphragm uh, will be pushed down and the intra-abdominal pressure will be much higher. And uh, at the end of the exhalation, of course, the diaphragm will be coming up uh, towards uh, the lungs. So while it is not so important when you practice them, it is important to practice them regularly. And the more regular you practice, the more comfortable you will get with them. I also suggest that you practice at the end of the inhalation and the exhalation. Breath holds are the cornerstone of breath work. It is one of the first exercises I recommend uh, people starting out to get familiar with, but also for advanced practitioners that uh, can uh, perform different breathing exercises, they can upgrade them 
by prolonging their breath holds. So useful for everyone and with uh, numerous benefits.